So the, the idea was here that uh, for the second hour is basically people are coming to dinner, are, you can raise your hand. Okay, well, so we are good, good to be here. Did you get that restaurant reserved? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. And then other goal is if you have any, any questions here, if you are, we have a group of developers because they want to go to dinner, collect it for you to answer anything, and as far as I can, I can also do that. And then, of course, we'll also spill over from the last talk, at least from the developers, we can continue the talks, the two points raised in the previous talk and uh, continue on those. But let's first talk if anyone has anything unrelated or to the previous point which you want to present now and go ahead. Yeah. What's the status of the uh, git migration? Support it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyone wants to talk about it? Yeah. 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 As far as I know, um, we're starting to have some progress, including the CR bot finally working. And uh, at least Teal, if I read correctly, is starting to migrate some of the overlays in uh, overlays.chentu.org to Git. And so hopefully that work will be uh, the first step to finally get to the Git migration for Chentu x86. What's the problems that you have there? Well, uh, there were several problems. We needed to... Uh, there were problems with the migration itself, which in the beginning was a bit slow. And Brian worked on that, and he, he improved it a lot. Brian uh, from French Me, French Me, which is an American Python specialist, did some work on, if you know, to Git SVN, which does the conversions. The initially the run for robots runs were like two days. Yeah. I, think, I think when the Ryan started optimizing it, it was set slightly over 12 hours, and I think that the last numbers were under two hours. The, the point why it was that if we have a long window of conversion, we can't get any security fixes done during that period. Uh, but at, that, that's now uh, not a problem anymore. So yeah. Then we had some problems with the tools. Uh, we have, uh, so we have to, uh, tools that uh, do the migration from CPS to rsync and uh, the hooks that are associated to CPS that have to be migrated to Git. I know some people working on it, but I don't know the exact status right now. And finally, there was a question about the, the access to Git, the control access to Git, which led to a fork in Git Live, which uh, we went to use. And as far as I know, uh, Rupert uh, in Hydra was working on it. I think it's very close, if not almost finished. But uh, I can't, I can't give you an, an estimate for when will it finally be done. I can well, probably say that most people are really hoping for it to be done soon. No. The way it's been done. Uh, basically, if we give an exact estimate, we are probably going to go over it, <laughs> as the history shows. But yeah. I think that the only person that might have an idea would be Robin or Chris, uh, since uh, I think that he's working with me. I don't know if anyone else has any real numbers to give this Any questions? Uh, anything else? There. What's the current status of the Adelaide project? In the last I thought this went quite better. Lack of manpower. Most lack of. PCC 4.6 is now finally. I'm sorry, you can probably. Uh, okay. The team and the It was no one from the step up. All the development retired from the group, the project. We needed to start over from the beginning. And we had a lot of programs with the full chain from the start. But it's still <laughs> live. I can live now, going. And the Genju Infra team does use Harden, I think. <laughs> uh, the the Harden team has also had some good additions in the last month. Yeah. For example, Blueness, who is also the um, Tin Hat Linux guy, um, he's showing lots of motivation getting quite a bit done, so... Can you hear it on the back what Patrick is saying? 
Uh, yeah, maybe I'll repeat it. But uh, yeah, Patrick was saying that uh, in the last couple of months there's been new people like the Tin Hat maintainer who have joined the project, so uh, it's going to a more positive direction, I, I would summarize, I guess. But yeah, but if you if you want to use it for direct production use, I would do your own evaluation. <laughs> I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to say some insights about the current hardware in the state. But from my user point of view, so from somebody that is writing those right now, uh, on one side, right now, the major problem that hardware has is that most of its, um, its documentation, it's very, very old. But, well, that's no problem because we are working on it. Parks uh, are GR security offer norm distribution oriented documentation, which is quite cool and should supply the benefits that we have currently in our documentation. And same goes for the Linux. And even if there is something it's not documented, if you go to the chat channel, me, Thorny, whoever's or whoever is here is going to help you. Yep. From a user point of view, you are saying if you use it on a production server, you are on your own. I have been using it. Uh, you have been on production server. I think it's been five years, six years. You still have a company problem. Yeah. So, like, in general, in general, I uh, so. I, I don't really recall who did the study, but I recall someone shared a link to uh, uh, analysis someone did a few months ago comparing the state of uh, uh, the strength of the, uh, of the software distribution. And they were clear that the change environment was one of the most secure around. They did a, so they did tests for uh, a few of the common failures, and they realized that the change environment is very, very good. I don't know if you, you recall the link, sorry. Uh, but I, I, I know I read it. Uh, it was very good of you. I think I will be able to wait a few minutes. Maybe I will try to show to link, okay? So, thank you. It's your talk. Yeah, it's my talk. But hopefully others can hear as much as possible. Uh, what I was saying, yeah, people people do it around harder in production, so there is a lot of people around with vested interest in keeping harder going. So, um, it, yeah, I guess that's one part of it. Gen, 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 Gen U uses Gen 2 hardened. Hmm? We use Gen 2 hardened. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. Um, yeah, some, some of my thoughts. Um, we want to grow uh, Gen 2. We want to make more people contribute and uh, and yeah and know how Gentoo works but uh, we don't know how to do this uh, we discuss some points uh, we know we have a rolling release system and so we are not in the press the local press and not at this to watch, to watch. and um, so what we can do else um, one of my idea where uh, is um, yeah to create a new installer I know that's a <laughs> point. Okay, please. It's, it's called Saba. No, no, no. <laughs> but, but, but a different one, not not a graphical installer. Oh, okay. uh, like something like a script, uh, which which um, yeah, which looks in the database um, with with the information of uh, proc. Uh, CPU info. Um, uh, so it uh, yeah it takes the right C flex into the main con, uh, a different tool uh, to select some uh, use flex of your liking or something like uh, a set um, which which detects uh, oh you want to use KDE okay so we prefer this use flex and. Um, yeah, something like a simple installer for the power user who, who knows what to select, but to support the not so um, improved user um, with presettings. And I think you've just triggered Guido's time machine because we already have uh, profiles, for example, for KDE that set all the interesting use flags. Mm -hmm. So that's already there. And with the C flags, 
Um, I've seen lots of users play around with it. In the end, I would say, if in doubt, with defaults, most users shouldn't play around with it. Because it's, it's maybe at a 5% performance difference, and uh, the negative uh, cost of stuff breaking or randomly doing unexpected things is much greater than that, in my opinion. Hmm. Not in my, because uh, uh, the, the disadvantage is only that you can move your system to another arch architecture, uh, but I don't see other negative aspects. I guess, I guess you haven't seen the four-line C flag monsters that some users create. <laughs> yes, but I, I prefer the uh, safe C flag. So yes. I hope <laughs> all of you will so leave defaults. Try to compile the world with the most aggressive. I thought of optimizing if you succeed. I'm not going to give it to the yes, but not for some time as aggressive. You can do that. Um, but the, the, the biggest uh, advantage of this uh, strategy uh, is if um, yeah, the, the distribution builds itself, after lots of hours, of course, but you have an uh, actual and an uh, most optimized for your uh, target architecture mm -hmm. system distribution, um, yeah, which can't any other deliver. Um, because have you compared the difference between default and optimized C flags in terms of performance? I know uh, it's, it's different uh, to to compare uh, to benchmarks this and uh, the, the percentage is low. Okay, but that's one of our biggest uh, advantages compared to other distros that you can optimize as maximum as you want um, on your, on your uh, hardware. So uh, we should, yeah, we should um, push this feature to show the rest of the world here. Our distro builds itself, optimized to your target hardware, and uh, yeah, no one, no one else can do this. So you want to there, there's a question that in, in developer circles, the, uh, the people who have been around long usually present the opinion that C flags is not a central feature of Gen 2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, you're talking about optimization. I think that uh, the greatest uh, tool for optimization is use yeah. Yeah. More than yeah, more yes, of use yeah. 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 yes. Why should I build GDK support if I don't like GDK? So it makes no sense to, to activate every use flag, of course. Um, but and, and it gives a uh, greater improvement <laughs> in terms of performance. We have a greater uh, improvement by using the best, uh, better use flags <coughs> and only by going uh, crazy with C flag. Yeah, uh, but in my opinion, uh, I'm not saying C is every, important. To, to use every possibility Gen2 uh, delivers is uh, yeah, is the only way to get the most optimized yeah. system for yeah. your Provide, target, and, uh, and that's the reason why I use Gen2 because I can do it, yeah. and so you I want to do it. You can, but you don't have to, and um, I've been really confused because there were all these uh, benchmarks of startup times and people started hacking init systems. I thought, wait. We have already arrived there like two years ago. I get about seven seconds out of the box. What are they doing? <laughs> well, one one second now. <laughs> yes. I really don't see the point of system D. Most, most people don't know you can actually suspend your system too. <laughs> That's a cool trick. You actually use your thing for your compiler. Mostly I compile it, but I don't watch it during compiling. And coming back to the point about installers. Yeah, I want to add something to your script idea. I don't think it's a good approach for new users. I mean, let's say I'm a new user and the system does the first install by itself. I learn nothing. And the first thing that happens, I'm actually lost. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how... You are right. I know this point, yes? Yes, it's I mean, if you're a power every user... Every time in the forum, okay. Yeah, if you're a power user, but you can actually mm -hmm. make a script or get another script that like, does that. And it's very helpful because you know the 20 commands you need to install a Gentle system, you already know them. Okay, so... If you're a new user and you skip how to create your file right. system, you skip what the state tree is, you skip configuring your services, then an update comes along and you have to run etc update, but you don't understand anything there. And you suddenly <laughs> break your system and then you curse Gen2. Because it broke, but in, in reality, if you 
have the experience you can do it yourself. And if you think it's too much, then maybe you have to try something else. Um, you are right. I think so too. But the question is how can we get more users? Uh, and where is the negative aspect if we get more not so experienced users? We can help them in the well, we have, Someone has to support those users, and unfortunately, it's going to be us. <laughs> you know, if someone doesn't understand, he'll come and open a bug, and then he'll say, I don't know, whatever the problem is. But usually, he didn't follow the document. Probably. Or he thinks that <laughs> he knows. <laughs> well, I, uh, I understand your, your, your I mean, I know many people say well, so. Yes, I, your idea. I don't need this as an installer. Yes, yes. It's, it's clear. I mean, the concept is right that if we want more users, we have to just make it easier. But yes. maybe we. At this point, we don't want different distributions. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we don't target those users, and we don't. We, it's not in our goals to have many really? users using well, it. Well, well, we have a different, sort of different focus. Uh, look at it from the user perspective. Um, I mean, the one thing is the installer, but I actually agree with this. If you follow the Gen 2 handbook, even if you actually have no prior experience with Linux, follow the handbook exactly. You're almost certainly going to get a working system. And well, that's how I taught myself Linux using the Gentoo handbook, pretty much. Uh, but I think what the part of the problem is is also not just getting new users; it's also keeping the ones that are existing and keeping them happy. Um, I'm actually running Ubuntu on this laptop here because my Gentoo system broke just before this weekend, and I didn't have time to go all compiled again. <laughs> um, and I was speaking to a lot of people okay. last night uh, at the beer meet. Um, and almost everyone I spoke to there had actually run Gentoo at some time or other, but eventually had gone away from Gentoo, usually because of problems regarding updates and uh, breaking systems. Unstable um, or unstable? Uh, stable. Stable. Um, and I should say, conceptually, they have quite a simple point uh, <laughs> where it frequently goes wrong. Um, Portage, of course, has certain possibilities to change things uh, in the system, but for a number of crucial updates, you need to do preparatory work. I mean, for example, the thing that broke my laptop recently was uh, it was a major pearl upgrade. You need to do quite a lot of extra stuff around there. Um, and if you actually research each of your updates individually, every single package, you've got all the information you need. I mean, uh, documentation is there, and once it's broken, you can usually fix it too. Um, what really goes wrong is when you've got a situation where you only update uh, once in a long time, you've got a whole list of sometimes tens, even hundreds of packages that go to be updated at once. Um, you do UDNAV, uh, UDNAV uh, system, UDNAV world, get this great big list, you want to do it, yes or no? Yes. But no point there uh, is there a little flag raised that will warn the user, hang on, in that list of 150 things there, there's one or two things that you really need to have a look at first before you do this update. Uh, and actually, you do get told it afterwards in the messages, but then usually it's too late if something goes wrong. But, but yeah, this is where the easy like news was right. supposed so to I, be. I would like to say sort of, <laughs> <laughs> sort of the power users who like Gen2 to, uh, to make them a bit happier, maybe a bit more user friendly for them. Just maybe we should have a look at some way of flagging that up too. So when you get the choice, do you want to do these 150 updates? Be careful. There's easy a dangerous one in there. It's this one. Have a look at this first. Mm -hmm. If there's an easy fix, you could hire me to admin your machines and <laughs> stuff would <laughs> break. Yeah, no there is all, all, already a system for that. It's called, it should say that you have three unread news items. But the problem is that not all developers are using the system to its potential. They should be flagging their, the most dangerous upgrades to news items. But I think the Perl update actually mentions nicely that you should run Perl cleaner, yeah. Perl yeah. update minus minus all or something like that. It was yeah. so well. The it was thing like is, it might get lost in a really big update yeah. through yeah. all kinds of messages. Then the biggest problem is we don't have 2.2 portents uh, yet. So we don't have preserved links. So if something happens yeah. and here yeah. it, uh, I'm on a different not world, so well, I don't have that problem. <laughs> okay, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we have the issue that everything that depended on the old version broke. Yeah. yeah, we actually have something for this, but it's not in stable. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. too bad. Mm -hmm. Because of what it would be fixed by Perl doing the same as Ruby does, which is use flag type installation directories. Well, yeah. <coughs> 
<laughs> I actually think what Perl does is pretty nice because why would I need and Python 2.6 and Python 2.7 and Python 3.1 and I don't, you know, I don't like that system. I just want one Perl because one Perl to rule them all. That's okay. Perl probably also stays compatible. So was until recently only Python 2.4. So if if you wanted to. The Python uh, breaks, uh, breaks, uh, makes major versions because they are incompatible. Yeah, but uh, you have legacy applications yeah. that are stuck on an older yeah. version, and Portage needs Python 2.6. So with only one version, you couldn't install it. Now the problem is, how do you expose that to users? Because, for example, on an old system, I had I think eight GCC versions and five or six Python versions, and that stuff never gets cleaned up. Right. But mm. GCC, I understand. But yeah, but uh, for me, it's just a language. 3.2? <laughs> I'm curious. You <laughs> 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 shouldn't have been in the tree at all. Yes. <laughs> but if you use, use flags, when, when the obsolete application gets upgraded, you can just dip clean all the stuff away. I, I think, I think Which is also a funny crap for users because they upgrade uh, GCC by accident, and, you know, like, oh, update, update, yeah. And then they run depth clean. They're still on the old GCC, which gets removed. And then compiling stuff fails in weird ways because no GCC files. I think we're going to have to stop here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think we are missing the point here, because we keep stuck on one people at a time. We keep stuck on language binding, on uh, languages, and so on. But what, what I mean, the, the important point that has to be made is just what is stable is supposed to be stable and has to stay stable. I mean, uh, I, I hit the same problem some like months ago as well with my laptop because it was basically rendered useless via a stable uh, revision bump. Uh, so uh, <laughs> at that point uh, stayed open for about a week or so uh, until somebody took finally care of it. Uh, I mean, I knew what to do, but... Uh, I think that one of the problems between stable and unstable is that for some users, probably unstable these days is a lot stable than stable. <laughs> and the reason is very simple, right? Mm How -hmm. many developers use stable tree? Raise your eye. How many developers use stable tree? For what? For anything. If, if it breaks, does it hurt you? the <laughs> I use the running character of CV. <laughs> and that's why some breakage get to the cemetery in their children. So the, the breakage of the user is a good thing. Uh, that it should, should not really happen because the, the, the manual how to be able to run in the bird manual should never even exist. Yeah, so that was my point. I think it's more to use your basically in a large part, right? It's for very convenient to do. The problem is that um, before the update, you can't really list all things affected. I mean, really but precisely. But Portage has sets, and Portage could see it as a set, which you do it. There's a good difference. Yeah, but the, the basic problem from my point of view is that, you know, for example, you see one update, curl, and then suddenly it's like, oh, wait, there's like 100 other packages I have to handle, and oh, now you're re rebuilding this, so I have to rebuild those again. That uh, you can't really predict what's going to happen, uh, which would need someone smart to write those magic tools. No, mm -hmm. You only need to have the metadata added to what it is. That's the same one for Zach Nico wants to be added to one PPA to fix the problems that the term rebuild has, because it has a problem mm -hmm. with ELF systems, and it's basically because on ELF systems you have to guess at some point what is a library and that is uh, and uh, well at least so that problem uh, is only resolved by adding information like this is the uh, so name symbol thing whatever installed here and now the next package is going to install another so you can already look up which packages use the old one 
and you know it's being replaced, so you can just add it to the list. But you need that information. That's, that's, that's just what's in there. So we need to add that information to those e-builds that where it is important. I think there's one more thing to to Lisa uh, uh, When I do an update to Word, um, package gets broken that do not that won't be upgraded normally, and they should be upgraded during um, this update feed where automatically reported because afterwards in a uh, in a easier clipping, but it knows that they are that they need to be rebuilt. Mental note for everyone, EAPI 5 is open for features. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Okay. Um, I guess I'll put something in. Um, uh, about distro watch. Uh, going back to that. Any comments or any suggestions? Sorry. I actually it, it affected me. I know someone said it doesn't matter, but actually, I used to use it for my five years from like 2002 to maybe 07. And but like right around the 07 thing. No, I should say like more like 06. Quit then came back. Looked at it in 07 or 08 or something like that, and saw what Distro Watch had to say, and like, got scared away. Just didn't do it, and I didn't really actually know it was alive until I came here, and I was like, "Oh wow, it's still alive!" Like, so. <laughs> so that gives us some perspective. Okay, we should do something about it. <laughs> I changed my mind. Actually, we need it now. Can we just do We tried to change Distro Watch's opinion several times by. Uh, exchange an email between individual developers and distro watch guy. And he said it's quite clear. The email, the email responses, his opinion, opinion is on the website, which he circulated around with some of his readership. What's going to change his opinion, if any, is by other people writing in and saying it's what, what's there in the right. So I learned everybody in theory writes to distro watch. We could hire some nice Russian negotiators that sit down <laughs> and change his opinions quite nicely. Yeah, but everyone here could write to DistroWatch using your personal emails. As my another team. Do you run a solar being in a one grain one grain of solar now? One grain of solar, one minute later, 
Pandrein, Suba, de la Mother Mills Vader, o de Hood Rather, y os que estás por. What I'm trying to say is that one of the main problems of the continual seeking development in Jetu is that improvements and cool things usually come one at a time. There is no way we can solve that, obviously, because that could mean going to a person like Jetu, and if you do, uh, I'm going to all person. Do you suggest that you actually no. No, 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 no. What they say is that I recall that some time ago there were, for example, a small bulletin that was released uh, weekly or something like that. I think it was weekly. Gentle weekly news. Uh, sorry. Uh, I, I, I made a mistake. I made monthly. Not weekly news. The CWN stopped being published well, because it, it, there was no one who produced it, content. Yeah. It, it didn't really stop because there was no one around. Um, some people pissed me off really badly because when I write 80 to 100 percent of the content, and maybe, I mean, maybe I'm a bit aggressive here, but maybe I'm the editor then, and not just a contributor. Mm. Maybe. Oh, okay. and, and and there was. Okay, I understand what happened. But it didn't finish that. Short after that, tried to resume with the board, uh, the and then it finished. Uh, the scripted versions of the newsletter were quite amusing mm -hmm. because they came out on time but were quite boring. Um, I've mind. been thinking about uh, reviving it, but uh, it's a time investment of about minimum case, about 10 hours per edition. And that's uh, time I don't really have at the moment. So if someone uh, would throw some money at me, which is time in a different uh, scale, then it would be Why don't you say 10 hours so you get someone to contribute content? Yeah. 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 Right. 10 hours if you have the content. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Depends on my mood. <laughs> mm -hmm. Bottles of rum are also a good substitute. It might improve my motivation. Yeah. So we could try to see and find if Matthew uh, can find other people who would be interested in uh, helping out with marketing, in this case with creating content for the newsletter. Well, to be completely honest, I, to be completely honest, I promised that I will try to revive the Gen 2 weekly newsletter in my manifesto for a council this year. So you know you have to pay this year. As you can probably see, I quite failed doing that. But what is this? A sort of manifesto of vote for me or...? Uh, <laughs> I, I did all the other stuff I read that. And you're yeah. becoming a good politician. Another <laughs> <laughs> thing we could try is just uh, push Gentle Planet a little bit more in that direction. Because, I mean, that's automatically some sort of news aggregation and... Uh, I mean, if, if just everybody promises that if something happens uh, interesting in his uh, team, then he'll go, he's going to write a blog entry about it. Well, those are already... <laughs> really, if it's on front page, people read it. If it's on blog, they probably won't read it. Yeah, I, I, I see that pretty clearly. It's from the I get hits whenever that comes I get more hits whenever something comes Something different. Uh, yeah. Can you explain or tell something about uh, the creating of the emails in the official portage tree regarding 
the options uh, which is filled up in this e build compared to the uh, original source. Uh, if you if you check with uh, configure L, you see lots of options, but only a percentage of this is um, you yeah, choosable in the e build as use flags. And uh, is there a process or is it? Uh, yeah, the liking of the developer of this package, or yeah. uh, how is this? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, yes. If I can do a short yeah. summary. Uh, by policy, if if it introduces dependencies that are controllable, then you need to make them use flags. After that, it's I guess it's a maintainer's game. Uh, but for example, if you can control, uh, does this um, uh, e-build give you this nice one little source file that does wonderful things and uh, there's no downside, then it's probably good to enable by default and not give the use back choice. Uh, that's probably not complete because if you have a uh, option that enables some, uh, accounts for some dependencies, still you can enable it, hard enable it, because you are 900% sure that it is already on the user system. Let's say Zilip, optional Zilip. So why should I use other than use what for Zilip? Everyone has a system. Yeah. Just yeah. Anyway, I think you need to remove this question from the recruitment quiz now, since it's been recorded. <laughs> yeah, well, if, if they watch this song, I'm more than happy to let them in. <laughs> But uh, that question does have other answers that are required to uh -huh. that, That's definitely one of them, but still, I, I don't care how they learn the information, uh, as long as they do. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Quiz uh, So yeah, um, you're hungry? <laughs> But yeah, let's see what's left. Yeah, it's quite a uh, Seven to about left. Any last questions before all the hungry people are? Uh, and there's like, another proposal that maybe I wait a left out it. Uh, it's about the approval of the quality process. I think that being able to give to the recruits instead of a lot of separated talks with which has which has parts of policy. We try to give the uh, we try to write we can try to do that and give them one single document which has all what they are supposed to know. To tell is my heart. We have an issue with that for death manual. Developer handbook, I mean, the PMS and so on. But there are hints where to find the answers in the quiz now. I think yeah, there are. But um, the reason I what I'm trying to say is, I mean, so big, so so big of a <coughs> It broke the handbook, or so I I was a new developer, so no our policy is there. Because, for example, I have been reading Glenn uh, number 59. Yeah. Uh, okay, there are things I should know, but most of them, what? I mean, why should I know that there was another structure before that didn't work? And that's but taking perhaps. half of the blame, which means that my my take to do the test will be the, will be double. And this document has nothing to say about plebs. <laughs> but it actually does, I think. You see my point? No, yeah. I, 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 in fact, I'm doing my business now. I'm going to do that. Uh, one but of the I'd like to know if, if you think it's okay. No, uh, it would be great right. if someone needs to do it. There, there, are, there are two points here, probably, uh, main points. Is one is that the one purpose of the quiz is to force you to know what all kinds of documentation exists and to prose them. The second point is that if you don't know where to find things, you should be communicating with your mentor. Yeah, but, uh, we're trying to kill the default handbook for years now, and we, we didn't kill it yet. 
well, and trying to get some stuff in, into their manual that has the content. Hmm. I understand what I'm saying, and I agree that it's important for people to know where to search and where to use. But we also need to concentrate on yeah, polls, and we unfortunately haven't been able to get it done yet. But even if you give a lot of developer handbook for technical yeah. stuff, it's still there valid for many other things, and you would still left, we are still left with uh, uh, some yeah, other things. Let me let me make a suggestion. I mean, um, that's a pretty revolutionary one. But um, how about we just switch the e-build quiz and the end quiz? <laughs> because uh, the e-build quiz is basically asking a lot of stuff about organization structure, uh, and the end quiz is asking mainly technical stuff. Now, uh, the end quiz contains stuff that you actually need to know when you start actually working with e-builds. Uh, well, whereas uh, uh, the e-build quiz contains stuff that you learn while working with the people, meaning during the mentoring phase. Uh. Yeah, I think you could do it. <laughs> no, I don't see any reason why not. The, the, histor the historical background is that it used to be a two-phase process yes. in that you need that first to become like familiar with the community, then contribute in the middle and then in the end with. But these days we just do them both at once. And uh, yeah, but if we ever uh, get the quiz um, uh, web app into it, it's much easier to categor recategorize the questions. Uh, which it's mainly, mainly depending on info, which probably uh, as for Git and many other things uh, could use more resources. But, but that's down, that's in the pipeline, hopefully this year. There was, there was a problem with Ruby, right? The question for info was getting yeah, Well, they haven't posted any Rails applications before, so. Yeah, that's a good The issue was that someone on the team to remove that. Yeah. Take care of it. And yeah, there's yeah. one guy. What are your wishes? Uh, sad love topic, but uh, I think one of the main reasons that users think that we're dead is because we don't have any PR exposure to the public. Many of us use our web blogs to communicate signing stuff to the users, but this is actually not a good way, seems like quite a distributed way to, to communicate stuff. So, Instead of having or reviving the newsletter, because we really don't have the time to contribute both the new build system and writing stuff, we could uh, ask our users to write stuff for us, and we can just do the simple entity and then publish it. I think that's would work better. It's not the best thing, but at least we can show them that we are and here we are and we are working. There are plenty of users who are willing to help, but not like developers. Yeah. So we should take advantage of them. This is that. Just saying. Does the yeah. newsletter need to be on a, on a real regular basis, on a strict regular basis? It depends. There is no newsletter at all. So there's no rules. <laughs> you can do anything you want. The, the weekly newsletter was too much for The monthly newsletter, I don't know what happened to this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, the weekly newsletter worked quite well, mm -hmm. especially because there the were people uh, doing, for example, mailing list summaries. Mm -hmm. So uh, those, those items were small enough for one person to handle re reliably. And um, assembling all those bits gets also quite easy. Um, when you shifted to the monthly basis, there was basically no one doing any content because those people that used to do content were kind of not interested anymore. <laughs> Other questions? I, mean, I don't even know that myself. Do we have We're something? Not interested. <laughs> do we have something like a PR team? Yeah. We do. Who so doesn't have anyone active? We have a PR team. And because it would be, for example, nice. I mean, imagine, imagine, imagine you go to some event that is only like uh, marginally related to to Linux distributions, but to open source. In any case, and you have the opportunity of giving a talk there. It would be nice to just have some set of slides, and you can then adapt this to your personal needs. And uh, uh, actually, PR does have some stuff like that on yeah. its project space. Okay. Hungry? No, yeah. I said I wrote the template. <laughs>
Hey, how do you get a tilde there, George, on your lap? <laughs> <laughs> extension to use Kitty open for it. I sort of expect it to be in English. You can see that it's more. It's just template. It doesn't have any content. So yeah, thanks to everyone who contributed and maybe it's dinner time. <laughs> George, you have some details. <laughs> those who are joining us, those who don't. <laughs> Are you already?